Hey there, it's Chris Leverdeen, and today I'm going to share with you how to crochet this Baby Yoda or Yoda inspired bucket hat. For this project, I'm using size 4 yarn from the brand Peaches and Cream. It is 100% cotton, and although I have three of these, I'm actually not sure if I need this many, um, but I'll let you know in the end how much I use. This is all the information on this particular yarn that I'm using, but of course you can use whatever yarn that you prefer, whatever style, size, color, even though if you're going to make a Baby Yoda one, you should probably do it in a similar color to this one, which is Rosemary from, again, the brand Peaches and Cream. And I'm using a size 5 millimeter hook. If you don't know where to get your yarn, I will have links to similar ones in the description box down below, as well as a link to a hook. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is grab our yarn and create a slip knot. Now, if you're a complete beginner to crochet, I do have a crocheting for beginners video also linked in the description box below. And I highly recommend that you check that out first, practice with some stitches, and then come back to this one, even though I'm going to try my best to make this as beginner friendly as possible. It's going to be fairly simple in terms of which stitches we're gonna use. We're basically just going to use a single crochet the entire time but you still need to know how to like chain and make a slip knot and make a single crochet so yeah if you don't already know how to use those please go watch the crochet for beginners video down below and then come back to this one so after you've made your slip knot you're going to put your hook through it and then you're going to chain three one two and three and your project should look like this then from here you're going to go into that very first chain that you created like this with a single crochet. So you make a single crochet and you're left with this little cluster right here. Now you're going to go into that same stitch and make four more single crochets inside of that same stitch. So it's going to be one, two, three, Four. So a total of five single crochets inside of that one opening in the middle like that. And then from here, you're going to slip stitch into the very first single crochet that you made to complete the row. And you should have a little circle like this. Now from here, we're just going to keep going in a circle around and around and around until it's the size of the top of your head. So we're making the top of the bucket hat right now. So. From here, we're just going to continue with a single crochet. So go into the next stitch with a single crochet, but then we need the circle to get bigger and bigger. So what we're going to do is every other stitch, we're going to make two single crochets inside of that same stitch. So we're going to go into that next stitch and make one, then go into that same stitch and make two single crochets inside of that one stitch. But then in the next one, we're just going to make one single crochet. So go into that next one and make just one single crochet. And then in the next one, we're going to make two single crochets inside of that one stitch. Go into that same stitch and make two single crochets. And that's what's going to make your total number of single crochets per row increase since you're increasing the number of stitches that you're making. Uh, and that's why it's going to get bigger and bigger as we keep going. However, uh, sometimes you can run into one of two problems. So you see how it's like nice and flat and fairly even? That's what we're going for. However, if you find that your project is ruffling, then that means that you are increasing too often. If you find that your project is curling, that means that you're not increasing enough. So if it's ruffling, if it's kind of like wavy, that means that you're increasing too often. So try increasing maybe every three stitches instead of every other stitch. Maybe that will help. And then if your project is curling, again, that means that you are not increasing enough. Then try making two single crochets for every stitch instead of every other stitch. So those are the two problems that you could run into. But what we're going for is flat and even. <laughs> and typically for me, that means making uh, alternating two to one single crochets per stitch 
but sometimes it doesn't work out for some people depending on the type of yarn that they're using or how tight their stitches are. It totally depends on the person, but there's solutions to each problem and those are it. So I'm just going to continue with that pattern by making one single crochet, then going into the next stitch, making two single crochets per stitch, and that's what's going to eventually make this project bigger and bigger. So I'll check in with you every so often just so you can see the progress, but that's all I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to be making, again, one single crochet, going into that next stitch, and making two single crochets inside of one stitch, and then making one single crochet in the stitch, then making two single crochets in one stitch, and so on and so on until I put the project on top of my head and it's the same size as the top of my head. Another update of what my project looks like. And I'm probably maybe like halfway there. I want to say it's going to be like this big at the end. But yeah, here's another progression shot and I'm just going to keep on going. Another update on how the top of my bucket hat is going. So it probably still needs like that much more. And then we can move on to the next step, which is making the um, sides of the bucket hat and then the brim of the bucket hat. So we're going to make the top, and then we're going to make the side, and then we're going to make the brim. But first, let's go ahead and finish the top. Okay, so I've completed the top of the bucket hat, and if you're wondering, I made a total of 18 different rows. And again, just following the same pattern that I told you with the alternating single crochets. But now that I am done with the top of the bucket hat, it's time to make the side portion of the bucket hat. And the way we're going to do that is by going into the back loop of the single crochet. And what I mean by that is, so each single crochet kind of shapes a little V, right? And normally we would go through the front right here, which in turn goes through both of these loops and then make our single crochet. But in this case, we are just going to go through the back loop only. So do not go through the front right here, go through the back loop only. And we're going to make a row of this because when you go through the back loop only, it's going to shift the direction of the stitch. So instead of going flat across like this, it's going to go downward like this since you're only working through the back loop. And you're not going to see it right away, but once we continue making rows on top of this row that we're doing just the back loop on, then you'll see that it is actually changing the direction. So we're just going to make one row of this. So you're just going to go into the back loop and you're going to make zero crochets just in that back loop. So go through just the back loop, make a single crochet, just the back loop, make a single crochet, just the back loop, make a single crochet, so on and so forth. And again, you're not going to really see it right away, but after we build some more rows, it's going to kind of fold like this. So it's still going flat across, it's going to go down. You can still kind of see it a little bit, but yeah. So just make one full row of going through the back loop and then I will show you what to do next. This is what the project looks like after making one row of going into the back loop of the single crochet only. You can see a little bit of a difference right here. Instead of it being flat and straight, it shifts downward like this, and that's exactly what we want. So again, after you've completed that one row, you're going to then go into the single crochets like normal. And you're going to make a few rows of single crochet about this long, pretty much where you want it to cover your head. So this is the top of your head. And then um, however much you want it to cover, I guess your forehead until we make the brim. And I'll let you know how many rows that I personally make if you want to use that as a guide. But of course, the number of rows is different for everybody as everybody has different sized heads. So uh, you could just use my number of rows as a general jumping off point instead of having to be like, oh, I have to make exactly the same number of rows as she does. Not necessarily because I know that um, your head size or whoever you're making this hat for probably has a different head size than I do. But yeah, just so you know, for this, I made 18 rows of single crochet and then I made one row of going into the uh, back loop of the single crochet, and then I'm going to make a certain number of rows 
for this portion, which I'll let you know. And yeah, but all I'm doing is going into every single crochet with just one single crochet. We don't need to increase at this point. We're just gonna keep going around and around and around, making sure that everything is even. So this is what it would look like with just one row on top of that, um, one row of going into the back loop. Now this is gonna be the first row of just regular single crochet. And this is what the project looks like after a few rows. I'm probably about halfway there. One, two, three, four. I'm working on my fifth row right now, so I'm probably gonna make like 10 rows, but we'll see again. We'll see at the end how many I actually make, but this is what the project should look like so far after you continue making rows and rows of single crochet. And again, you're not going to be increasing. You're not going to be doing what we did here where every other stitch um, you would make two single crochets per stitch. It's just one single crochet per stitch. We're just going to keep this all the same width so it doesn't flare out. We don't want it to flare out. We want it to just stay straight. So just make sure that you're going into every single stitch. You're not skipping any and you should be good. And the way you know you're done with this portion of the hat is when you try it on and you're happy with the forehead coverage and you're ready to make the brim. So it's all totally up to you. So I will see you once I am completely done with this portion of the hat. This is what it looks like so far. All right. So in the end, I actually ended up making 15 rows for this portion of the hat. So on top, it's 18 rows of single crochet and then one row going into only the um, back loop of the single crochet. And then right here is where like I completed that one row. And then I also made sure to kind of line it up to the very last stitch of this portion of the hat as well, just so everything's even and there's a proper front side and back side to this hat. So I'm always going to have this right on the back since there is a little bit of a discrepancy right there. But yeah, so now that I have completed this portion of the hat, this side portion, we're going to make the brim now. So this is what the hat looks like, like this, top and then the side, and then now we just need to make the actual brim. And for the brim, it's very similar to what we did right here, except it's going to be the front loop instead of the back loop. So we want the project to, instead of returning inward like we did here, from here to here, we want it to turn outward, so go straight back straight again. So we're going to go into the first loop of the single crochet. So again, the single crochet has those two loops out of this little V that it has. And normally you go through the front, but this time we're just going to go through the first little loop right here and make single crochets, go through that front loop just that one front loop, not through the middle right here, just through this loop right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to redirect the project so it goes this way now. Instead of flat, it's gonna go up like this. So you're just going to be making one row of single crochet going into just that first loop or that front loop of the single crochet. So uh, right here, and single crochet, then just right here, and single crochet here, single crochet, just the front, single crochet, and that's going to turn the single crochets so that they go outward like this. Yeah. So after I've made my row, I will show you what to do next. Now that I've completed my one row of single crochet, just going into the front loop of the previous row of single crochet. This is what the project looks like. Again, not much different, but you can kind of see when you look closely that the direction of the project is changing. So instead of going uh, just flat this way, it has curved uh, outward like this. So to make the rest of the brim, we're going to 
increase. Now, here we increase to make the circle bigger and bigger, but it was relatively all flat. Now, in this case, we want it to kind of ruffle a little bit, so we're going to increase more often. So instead of alternating from making one single crochet, then two single crochets, and one single crochet, I'm going to make two single crochet, two single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochet, two single crochet, one single crochet. So it's going to um, make the stitches increase more often, and because of that, it's going to have a little bit of a ruffle. Now, if you just want the brim to be straight and flat, then you can just do what we did here and do the alternating of one single crochet, then two single crochet, then one single crochet, and two single crochet, if you just want it to be like a flat brim. But since I want mine to, again, kind of have that wave, I'm going to increase more often than normal to just keep it growing at a steady pace. So like I said, I'm going to go into the first stitch by making two single crochets, then the next stitch with making two single crochets, and then the next stitch is just going to be one single crochet, and then the next stitch I'm just going to make two single crochets, and then the next one two single crochets, and then in the next one just one single crochet, and then two single crochets inside of one stitch, and then two single crochets inside of one stitch, and then one single crochet inside of that next stitch, and so on and so forth. You can already kind of see it ruffling right off the bat. And now if it starts ruffling too, too much, then you could kind of scale back the number of times you make two single crochets per stitch and then switch over to just one single crochet per stitch for a while until you get it under control. But yeah, I'm pretty much just going to continue with this pattern uh, for a few rows and then I will check back in with you to show you what it looks like. I ended up making a total of seven rows for the brim and of course you can make it way longer if you like. It's totally up to you how many rows you'd like to make. But again, I have that slight wave because of the alternating pattern that I shared with you and it's not super duper wavy. <laughs> but again, if you do like it super duper wavy, then you just continue increasing more often. If you want it straighter, then you increase less often, but I wanted something in between, so this is the final result. And I cut the yarn from the yarn ball now that I am done with making my rows. And all I'm going to do now is bring that excess yarn through the last loop, give it a tug, and then I'm going to cut this excess yarn later. And now we're done with the base of the bucket hat. Now it's time to just make the ears. To make the ears, you're going to grab your yarn and make a slip knot, of course. And then we're going to chain 24. And that's just a number I made up because I think that's how long I want the ear to be. So chain however many chains you would like for the length of the ear. And I'm gonna go with 24 and see how long that ends up being. One, two, three, four, five, six, two, one, two, three, and 24. And this is how long the ear would be. That seems kind of long actually. Is that too long? No, because I kind of want it to be like cute and floppy. So I'm going to stick with 24. Of course, you can make it longer or shorter depending on however long or short you want the ears to be. So from here, I'm going to go back on the chain with a single crochet. And you can make the entire ear with a single crochet, but I think after this row, I'm going to switch it up and use a half double crochet. And that's just because I want the ears to be a little floppier. And with this single crochet, since it's such a tight stitch, I feel like the ear will be a little bit too stiff for my liking. So that's why I want to use a slightly looser um, stitch for the ears. But I'm just making this base row of single crochet just so there's some stability right in the middle. And then after that, I will use a half double crochet. But again, you can use whatever stitch that you want. If you want to continue using a single crochet, it's the exact same steps just by using a single crochet instead of what I'll be using, which is a half double crochet. So now that I am approaching the end here, I'm going to go into the very last stitch of the row 
And then I'm going to flip my project, not this way to work back on the row, but instead I'm going to flip it this way. So we're going to start going back and forth in terms of this way, then back up, then back down, then back up, then back down. And every time we reach this point in the project, we're going to make three stitches. So again, whatever stitch you choose to do, since I'm deciding to choose a half double crochet, I'm just going to make three half double crochets inside of that middle stitch right at the top. And what that's going to do is help make this project into a triangle, which is what we're going for with the ears. So now that I've made my three stitches right here at the top, I'm going to go down this side with my stitch, which again, I'm switching to half double crochet, which is through this, or yarn over, through the stitch, yarn over, back through the stitch, yarn over through all three loops left on your hook. Yarn over, through the stitch, yarn over, back through the stitch, yarn over, through all three loops left on your hook. Yarn over, through the stitch, yarn over, back through the stitch, yarn over, through all three loops left on your hook. And I'm just going to continue doing that all the way down this side of the project. This is what it looks like so far. And again, we're going for a triangular shape this time because his ear is like a triangle. So that's why I went with this method right here. So I'm going to crochet my way down, chain one, flip the project over, then crochet my way back up. When I reach this point, I'm going to make three stitches of half double crochet. Then I'm going to crochet my way down. Once I reach the end, I'm going to chain one, flip the project over, then go back up and so on and so forth. And you'll see that this will be widening and this will be an overall point, triangle shape. Can't really see it at first, but when you continue making rows, it will definitely start to form. So now I've reached the end of the row and I'm going to go into the very last stitch. And then I'm going to chain one, which is very important because if you don't chain one, your project will probably start to curve and we don't want that. We want a nice flat edge. And then you're going to go into that very first stitch of the new row. And then we're going to just continue on with the same pattern of going up and down and up and down and up and down, making sure that you make those three stitches inside of the very top stitch at the point. Right here, you make the three, you go down and up and down and up and up. And yeah, so that's what we're going to be following for the next few rows and then I will uh, show you the progress. So this is what my project looks like so far, and I'm starting to think that maybe I did make them a little bit too long. <laughs> maybe 24 uh, chains for the base it was a little bit too long, but maybe not. I'm not sure. I may need to unravel this and probably just do maybe like 18 chains. We'll see. Maybe I'll keep going and I'll like the length of it, but if not, Actually, you know, I think here to here would be a good length. Dang it. Okay, but the steps are going to be the same. So I'm gonna unravel this and end up chaining less than 24, but the steps are going to be the exact same. I am running out of sunlight, so um, I'm probably just going to skip to once I'm done with the ear. But again, the Steps are exactly the same. You're just going to keep, keep, keep going up and down and up and down and up and down until you have created the triangle. Cool. I still have some sunlight. Um, I wanted to let you know that you can just do the normal um, going back and forth the entire time and make a symmetrical triangle with that pattern. But notice that Baby Yoda's ears aren't exactly symmetrical and they're more like this shape. So they're going to like fold like this and like this. And then this is going to remain like kind of round and bigger than this part. So to do that, not only am I, have I been like stretching it to make that shape, but um, what I'm going to do is instead of going back and forth like this, so it's even on both sides, I'm going to cheat 
and do a, a, a one row of single crochet right here. And then I'm going to do another row of um, my half double crochet just at the bottom. So it's going to be uneven. So this will have, this side will have less rows than on this side. So this side will be technically a little bit larger and that will also play into the shape. And that's totally optional. You can make it symmetrical to make it easy, but I'm just um, letting you know that's what I'm going to do. So in the end, when you see that this portion is bigger than this top portion, that's what I did. I made my way down here and then I did an extra row. So instead of going here and then here, I skipped this part and I'm going to do an extra row right here. And this bottom part is going to be bigger than this top part. And that's what's going to make the Baby Yoda shape with a like bigger... Um, part of the ear at the bottom. But okay, yes, continue. And then after that, then I'm just going to continue going back and forth like normal. This is my finished ear. And what I did once I was done was cut the yarn from the yarn ball and then bring the excess yarn through the last loop. And this is what my project looks like. Again, it is uneven on one side because of the fact that I did that extra uh, row. But in total, I made a total of 12 rows. So that's starting from here, like one, two, three, four, five, 12 rows. And yeah, so what I'm planning on doing is kind of, you can just attach it like this if you want to, if you would, boop, cute little ear, but I'm gonna be a little bit extra and I'm gonna fold it right here at the tip. I'm going to sew it at the tip so that this part is together. And then I'll probably sew it down like that with the needle and thread, or you could use your yarn and just slip stitch through across the ear like that. I feel like that looks more like Baby Yoda's ear. Cute, and then I'm just gonna sew it on with needle and thread, sew it on. Um, I'll see if I have time tomorrow morning to film that process because it is getting too dark to continue and I need to wear this to Disneyland tomorrow. So hopefully I have time to film it, but if not, then just know that's what I did. I sewed it right here. And I sewed it right here. But now I have to go ahead and do the entire process to do, to make the other ear so our baby Yoda hat could have two ears. I decided to attach it right now and then make the second ear off camera because <laughs> I know I'm not gonna have any time to do this if I don't do this right now. So anywho, I grabbed my needle and thread and now I'm going to pinch this ear together like so. And then I'm going to put my needle and thread through it. Hopefully it doesn't just go straight through like that. And then go back on it like this. And voila, now the two ends are kind of together. And then just secure it like that, nice and tight. Just go back and forth on it, just at the edge right here. Now, oh, it looks cute just like that, to be honest. Aw. But I kind of want it to be folded over. So I'm just going to fold it over and then put my needle and thread through the stitches I want to be sewn down. So back and forth, and then through the front, and through the back, and then through the front. Then through the back, like that. Cute. Actually, I don't. I don't think I need to go all the way. I think it could just be like that, and it'll just stay folded if I attach it right here. Cool. We love saving time. Perfect. So let me just make one more stitch, like that, and then I'm going to close the project. I make it a little knot in the back. This. And then I'm gonna cut the yarn from the yarn ball. I mean, then I'm gonna cut the thread from the needle. This is my little ear right here. Cute. So now I'm going to figure out where the front of my hat is by locating where the end is, which is that area that is slightly off. So then this is the front. And then I'm gonna attach the ear right here. Now that my needle has been re-threaded, I'm going to grab my ear and 
the hat and I'm going to align the ear and the hat together and then do the same thing just go through the ear and the hat with the thread just go back and forth on it back and forth back and forth just through the ear through the hat the inside of the hat then back to the outside of the hat through the ear give it a tug make sure it's nice and aligned so it's not sewn in all weird and then you go down and again you could totally do this with an, um, your hook and yarn but I just prefer needle and thread because I feel like it's a little bit easier and a little bit more seamless with the small thread. Although it would have been better if I actually had green thread, but gotta work with what I've got. And all I've got is black and white thread. At least I could maybe use a marker to color the thread green later on with the, oh, uh, white thread as opposed to using the black thread that I have but yep so just going back and forth with the needle attaching it to the hat so it's nice and attached to the hat oh it's perfectly floppy that's exactly what I wanted you could probably still uh, achieve that with a single crochet but that's why I wanted a slightly more loose looser um stitch so that it can be floppy i think floppy would be cuter come on so i'm almost done here Okay, so now that I've reached the end of the ear, it's nice and attached, and this is what it looks like. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, I love it. I love the way that it turned out. Yep, that's perfection. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side and make the other ear, and once I'm done with that, I'm completely done with the project. Eee! And I'll be ready to go to wear it tomorrow to Disneyland. And by this point, by the time you are watching this on YouTube, I would have already taken those photos at Disneyland. So here are a few of them. If you would like to see the rest and even more photos, follow me on Instagram at Crystal Everdeen, as well as on TikTok, also at Crystal Everdeen. It's a fun time. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it either interesting, entertaining, or helpful. And if you did, please give it a big thumbs up before you go and want to check out more of my projects. I have so many of them on my channel, ranging from a beginner-friendly step-by-step tutorials to more advanced crochet with me's, style my crochet, crochet ideas, and so much more. So be sure to click the red subscribe button if you have not already, so I can see you next time. Bye! And may the force be with you.